Open your Bibles to 2 Timothy, chapter 4. This is where Paul realizes his time as a soldier of Jesus Christ on this planet was coming to a conclusion. And in verse 6 in chapter 4 in 2 Timothy, it reads, For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure, so that word departure, is at hand. I have fought. We'll go to that word departure here in a few moments in verse 6. But I have fought. Circle have fought. The Greek also defines it as a struggle. A fight. Contending with an adversary. That tries to keep, try to keep us from that prize. I have fought, I have struggled, I have contended with the adversary, I have labored, I have toiled. It means all of that. A good fight. An unweary zeal to spread the gospel. One of the most encouraging to me, even though I never met John face to face, but when he was receiving his cancer treatments, it was a joy to see someone that was ill with advanced cancer, excited going to the treatment centers so he can spread the good news and what his hope was in, and that was Jesus. I used to read those messages and I would say to myself, if I'm ever put in that position, Lord, make me like John. Make me like John. I used to get so much encouragement. I never shared that with the family or anyone else. I used to get so much encouragement watching someone through their struggles have an unweary zeal to spread the gospel. Struggling, putting up the fight, competing for that prize in the process, and, and contending with an adversary that's trying to keep us from that prize. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. That's why I said it was sad news for the ones that are left behind, but it was happy news because we know right now John is up there with Jesus. And whether he's getting that crown of righteousness now or that's going to happen at The final time when Jesus issues rewards could be argued. But one thing that's not, that can't be argued, because I don't believe in soul sleep or your soul is sleeping. To be absent in this planet with this body is to be present with the Lord. And one day we'll get a new body to go with that soul and spirit. If he's received this crown of righteousness already, well, hallelujah. If he still has to wait for it till all things are done, Nevertheless, he's with Jesus. No more pain, no more sorrow. But I had you circle the word, my departure is at hand, or words. The Greek paints a beautiful picture in several different ways of what that departure is like. To depart in the Greek, and I'll give you Three explanations of it this evening, and all three are valid. 
part in the Greek. That's mentioned here in verse 6. Paints a picture of a ship hoisting the anchor and loosening the mooring ropes and departing from one country to another country. Hoisting the anchor, that's what this body really does for us. It's like an anchor that really is keeping us down for the time being. A sin-ridden body, even though we're sinless because we're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and he's removed all our sin, where no one can find it, including his father, it's still an aging, decaying body. It's not the new body that's been promised to us. That's still yet to come. But his soul, his spirit's been hoisted. The anchor's been lifted. The loosening of the mooring ropes are no longer tying him down. And he's departing. I'm speaking of John. And anyone that's passed on in the faith departed from this country to another country. Paul, in the scriptures, and since I'm referring back to John, John has been anchored and tied down to this world. But the anchor and the ropes of this world for them have been loosed. Here in the story, not a story, here in the scriptures, Paul was about to set sail. And John has. For the, or to the greatest of all ports where Jesus is at. Talk about having a destinational port. John has set sail to the greatest of all ports and now he's with Jesus. Another picture in verse 6 the Greek paints is breaking camp. Breaking camp. See, this world is not our permanent residence. There's a song that says, This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Oh, is that so true? We're just passing through. This world is not our home. In the Gospel of John, in chapter 14, the first few verses, Jesus says he's going to away to, so he can prepare. And of course, everyone thinks it's mansions, but it's really dwelling places in the Greek for us. He doesn't say he's going to leave, come back, and then prepare a place for us. He's going to go, place a, go, go leave this planet and prepare a place for us, a dwelling place. John might not have his new body yet. But his soul and spirit, I believe, is in that dwelling place that Jesus has personally prepared for him. We are just campers, folks. We're just campers down here. Campers that, God willing, we keep fading until we get our permanent residence that Jesus is preparing us for us. The last picture this word paints, or these words paint, it's a picture of the unyoking of an animal from the burn of a cart or the burn of a plow or the burden of a millstone which it had been pulling to grind the grain. Paul, John, he 
just passed away a few days ago, they are released from the yoke and the burden of labor and toil in this life. And if they haven't received it already, it's still to come. The crown of righteousness plus many more crowns and a slew of eternal rewards. All we had to do, they went on and they, were, they are with Jesus. All we have to do is keep fighting the good fight of faith to meet them one day. And more importantly, to meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Master. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Let's keep loving his appearing. So we can catch up one day with our loved ones. And more importantly, with Jesus. For the family that's left behind, keep fighting the good fight of faith. John is fine. He's with Jesus. He has never been better. Never been better. And we too will share what he has right now when we get to see Jesus. There's an old story that Christians used to circulate. The early Christians. They didn't say goodbye when someone passed. They said good night. To the effect that early Christians never said goodbye but good night as they parted with their dying friends. We do not sorrow as those who have no hope. For we know that the conscious spirit will meet the unconscious or sleeping dust on that glorious resurrection day. That's when we get our new body. And there's even a poem that went with this Christian legend. Sleep on, beloved sleep. Well, I don't believe we soul sleep. But sleep on, beloved sleep, and take thy rest. Lay down thy head upon the Savior's breast. We love thee well, but Jesus loves thee best. That is so true. Good night. Good night. Good night. It's not goodbye. It's just good night. We will see you in the morning when that morning comes for us. And what a resurrection day that will be with for our bodies. When we all get to share that experience together where soul, spirit, and new body becomes complete. And we rule and reign with Jesus forevermore. The ones that gone on before us, they've competed for the prize. They contended with the adversary. They struggled, they fought, they labored, they toil. But there's all kinds of, kinds of crowns waiting for them, including the crown of righteousness. John has graduated. But it's not goodbye. I'll meet him for the first time soon enough. And I will say hello. And his family members
will rejoice with them when they're all together once again, but this time with Jesus. With Jesus. And I'm not saying we're not with Jesus now because through the Holy Spirit, He's in us. I'm talking about face to face. In the meantime, let our face seek His face, as the psalmist wrote. And let's make it. For those who are left behind, let's keep fighting a good fight of faith and pressing on towards that mark. Pray for John's family, for strength and encouragement. I will be, and I want you also, in the next few weeks. Until we meet for the first time, John, good voyage. No more anchor, no more mooring ropes. You've broken camp. And there's nothing holding you back any longer. Till we meet, good night. Play a song.